Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The mystery of Christ. As we enter the Epiphany season, we look tonight at the Ephesians text from this first Sunday of the Epiphany. And we look at what is this mystery of Christ that Paul speaks of in this letter to the church at Ephesus. And it's a mystery that makes him a prisoner for Christ, Jesus. And how does this mystery of being a prisoner and this mystery of Christ help us to get through our daily existence? Help us to get through a life in a sinful, broken world, in our own sinful, broken lives. The world would have us believe that we can fix what ails us. But if you can fix what ails us, how do you count for all of the pain and suffering in the world? And there's been lots over a history of pain and suffering in the world. Mao Zedong himself was responsible for the deaths of well over three quarters of a billion people, his own citizens. And sad to say that that was just all those days when all those people were being slaughtered, just another day in a sinful world. World War I, World War II. Millions upon millions died. And each and every day, as those death tolls went up from both combatants and civilians, each of those were just another day in a sinful world and the consequences of sin being played out. In our history as Americans, some are plainly honest to us, Pearl Harbor, on that day, December 7th, many of our citizens died, people from other countries. But again, that was just another day in a sinful world. The Twin Towers coming down. Again, not just our own citizens, but people from all over the world. And it was just another day in a sinful world. Innocent, helpless children in schools and movie theaters. People being slaughtered. Columbine was painful, yes, but still just another day in this sinful world. Aurora, Colorado, people watching a movie in the evening and slaughtered just another day in this sinful world and just recently in Sandy Hook. A school full of innocent children and their teachers. And as terrible as that was, it was just another day in this sinful world. Not to mention the millions upon millions who die who are murdered by the people who should protect them. The womb is not a safe place. Floods, earthquakes, tornadoes, hurricanes. In a world that believes survival of the fittest, it should be no surprise in a meaningless existence that the weak would be snuffed out by the strong. And if we're all descendants of some primordial soup, why does it matter anyway? Because these things hurt and they're wrong. And we know this because God's law is written on our hearts, whether we acknowledge it or not. We know this to be hurtful and painful because it violates God's law that is to protect innocent life and to protect each other. We as Christians are not feudalists. When I say it's just another day in a sinful world, I'm just acknowledging the reality of being a sinful person in a broken, sinful world. And part of that process is to acknowledge where all the pain comes from. We must acknowledge that it's cause, all of this death is caused by sin. All pain and suffering has as its source sin. Sin of the individual who is suffering. Sin of those who perpetrate pain and murder upon others. Sin of generations past. 
that left us this broken world, cursed because of what took place in the garden. And later, further imbalanced when the flood took place, so that all of those tornadoes and hurricanes and earthquakes have as their source those things, human sin, thousands of years in the past. God's perfect world cursed by sin and broken and unbalanced by the flood. Now we don't like to admit this truth, that sin is the source of all pain and suffering, because it's easier to blame someone else or something else. Booze, guns, food, knives, clubs, those things cannot and do not kill people. People kill and hurt people. But it's easier to blame the symptom rather than its source. It was an accident. It was a mistake. An error in judgment. And just like Adam, we often find ourselves doing the same thing, blaming God. It was an act of God. No, storms that kill people and earthquakes that kill people are the result of human sin, not acts of God. So how can the mystery of Christ that tonight's text speak of help us to deal with all of these real painful realities, these problems of living in this world with the broken world and with ourselves? From the very beginning, Christ was there, intimately involved, mysteriously in ways that can't be explained, giving of himself to fix what sin broke. The very creation that he was part of speaking into existence, made perfect in every way, made very good, as Scripture tells us. And that is what he's done throughout time. He seeks to make it very good again. In his pre-incarnate state, that is, Christ before he was born of a virgin, he shows who he is and what he came to do. There are examples in the Old Testament. Many of them, we'll touch on a few. He spoke with Hagar in the desert and told her that even though Adam, Abraham's sin and Sarah's sin had put her out in the desert with her son Ishmael, he was still going to take care of her. Not just take care of her, make her son a great nation. And Abraham had a couple of visits. One visit just before Sodom and Gomorrah were destroyed, he made, had a meal with them. And he was told of the promise and reaffirmed of the promise, even though that he and his wife were in their old age, that he was going to deliver mankind through a promised seed of him. Just before Sodom and Gomorrah were destroyed and his, his nephew and two daughters were the only ones that came out. And later, when his son Isaac was to be sacrificed, the promised one. He speaks with him and provides a sacrifice on his behalf to uh, prevent Abraham from having to sacrifice his own son, which God himself would do later by sacrificing his own son. We see the pre-incarnate Christ, the angel of the Lord, leading the armies of angels in Gideon speaking with him and helping him to protect his promised people through whom Christ would come. Now, none of these events make sense. You can't explain with reason any of these miraculous examples I've shared with you. They are mysterious. They are miraculous in nature. The pre-incarnate Christ is just as mysterious and miraculous as the one who came to us on Christmas. And reason can't have crap for these great things. But it gets better. Christ is born of a virgin. Not just another day in a sinful world. This is the Son of God made flesh. Come to redeem His creation. Lived a perfect life. God pleasing in every way. Amongst His creation. In human flesh for over 30 years. And not a single one of those was just another day in a sinful world because God himself walked amongst his creation. He took upon himself 
the sins of all mankind, from the very first forbidden fruit to the last sin committed by someone who probably hasn't even been born yet. All of it. He took it all upon his shoulders to the cross. That Good Friday was not just another day in a sinful world. That day was the day that the sins of all of God's creation were redeemed. He conquered sin and death three days later as he rose from the tomb. That first Easter was not just another day in a sinful world. That was a day upon which God proclaimed his victory of the very thing that sought to destroy his creation. He connects each and every one of us to that death and resurrection in our baptism. For each of us, that special day is not just another day in a sinful world. That's the day that we are physically and spiritually connected to Christ on the cross, Christ resurrected for our eternal salvation. He feeds us with his body and blood every time we receive the Lord's Supper, giving us forgiveness. And each and every one of those days when the communion of saints here and abroad take part in that event, that's not just another day in a sinful world. That's a proclamation of God's victory over sin, death, and the devil as forgiveness is consumed by his saints. He feeds us with his body and blood. And in the beginning of the service, he absolves us because he can. He has the authority to absolve us. He paid for all the sins. Not just another day in a sinful world. And this mysterious state of being a prisoner that the text speaks of, the mysterious Christ, in a place of comfort and blessing. That's where we reside. That's the kind of prison he provides for us. Not a prison that traps us, but frees us. Especially when it seems to be just another day in a sinful world. And the pain and suffering that we bring upon ourselves, or that we cause others, or that others cause us to suffer, are washed away by our membership in his family. That doesn't mean the pain and suffering goes away. That just means that we have access to the peace that surpasses all human understanding to give us access to get through those things. It's there to soothe us with a peace that can't be explained, a mysterious peace. And I wouldn't want to be without that great gift. Membership has its privileges. This mystery is that Gentiles are fellow heirs. An heir doesn't do something to become an heir. An heir is made an heir. Members of the same body and partakers of the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. The mystery of Christ is his sweet gospel meted out on behalf of his creation. This grace was given to preach to the Gentiles, you and me, Gentiles, the unsearchable riches of Christ, to bring to light for everyone about the plan of the mystery, hidden for ages in God who created all things, so that through the church, the manifold wisdom of God might now be made known. When people speak of pain and suffering caused in the next disaster that takes place, the next act of senseless violence, and make no mistake of it, there will be a next act of senseless violence because we live in a sinful world. The only thing that would prevent that is the second coming because that's the reality of the world that we live in knowing that he will come. The next time we hear that, that's our opportunity. Our opportunity to speak of the mystery of Christ, who redeemed all of his creation and provides for us the peace that surpasses all understanding that we carry in ourselves and can and should share with others. This was according to the eternal purpose that he has realized in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have boldness 
and access with confidence through our faith in him. In Jesus' name, amen.